In today's video, we're going to go over both users and operators in Voice Console, and for those who use it, Voice Link. We will look at how to create them and manage them. This video is intended for use by managers and supervisors who are tasked with maintaining access to your Voice Console and Voice Link system. The first thing that you will need is going to be your own user logon account. This account will need to be an administrative account or an account with a user role that allows management of other users and operators. Your account should be provided to you by another member of your management team who already has an administrative rights logon. For some customers, your IT team will provide this account. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first let's define what the difference is between a user and an operator. A user is someone who's going to log into the application GUI just like we did. An operator is going to be an individual who will log onto a device and perform work. One person can have both a user and an operator account. Let's start with user accounts. User accounts are created and managed from the administration tab. Once you're on the administration tab, you will see the options under the administration menu and users is the first option. Once you've clicked on this, you will be able to see all of the users that exist in your Voice Console instance for each site. In this case, we are on the default site, but there is another site in this Voice Console instance, and if you click on that, you'll be able to see the users that exist there. Creating a new user is a very easy process. Once you have users selected under administration, you'll see user actions populated below. In this case, we have one option to create a new user. The reason we only have this one option is because we haven't highlighted any of the users here. If I select one of them, you'll see that all of the other user actions then become available to view the user, edit the user, or delete the user. First, let's look at creating one. Once you click Create User, you're going to be presented with a pretty straightforward page where you'll enter a name, the password, confirm the password. You can select to force the password to be changed or not, depending on what your security practices are at your site. And then you can select roles. Roles are something that will be covered in another video, but a short um, answer here is that you can create different roles other than administrator and read only in your Voice Console instance. And those roles can limit the uh, activities of a user who logs in. For instance, if you want to have somebody who is almost completely administrator, but can't do things that would be potentially damaging, such as delete users or delete operators or delete task packages, you can actually create a role for that. But again, we'll cover that further in another video. For now, let's continue looking at the options you have when you're creating a user. I'm going to go ahead and make a test user here, just so we can see how it's done. You can hit the tab key to move to the next field. And if you do not enter the same password here, the application will tell you that when you try to save this user. Now in this case, I'm going to say I only want this user to be read only. And then you need to decide, do you want this user to have roles for all of the sites, which is the default, or do you only want this user to be able to work in one site or another? In this case, we're going to say this user can only be in Pittsburgh. Then the status of the account, by default, is going to be created as enabled. You have a choice here to add an email address, and this would only be useful if your voice console has been configured to send emails to users um, when there are certain events that occur in Voice Console, um, such as under the notifications. You can add notes to the user account. Um, some customers prefer to make a note as to the date that the account was created and who created the account 
just so that they can keep track of who was doing what in the GUI. And then when you create, you'll see up here that you have created this test too. The important thing to note is you're not seeing this user here. And the reason is because we're actually in the default site. And that user was created in the Pittsburgh site. It's something to keep in mind because if you do have a full administrative login into Voice Console, you will have that option to select where you want to create the account. If we go to the Pittsburgh site, you'll see that the test2 user is here as a read-only user. Managing your user accounts is just as easy as creating them. To manage an account, you simply highlight the account by clicking anywhere on the line that is not a hyperlink. And then under your user actions, you select what you want to do. Viewing the selected user simply gives you a page that shows you the username, what their role is, what site they are in, and whether they are enabled or not, the notes and email if they were added, and it will also tell you the last login. However, as you can see, if you go back to users, all of this information also is in the table. You can also edit this user or delete the user. We're going to go ahead and click on edit because this is something that you'll do most often when managing a user account. The most common thing is you're going to need to reset someone's password because they forgot what they set it to. That's done simply by changing these two passwords here and again deciding do you want to force the password change or not. The other thing to check whenever you do have to create a password for one of your user accounts is make sure that their status is still enabled. Oftentimes, a user will have locked themselves out of the account, and this will say disable, at which time you would have to then select to enable the account before you saved it. If you are in here and you've decided you really don't want to make any changes, of course you can cancel. Um, one of the other things that you can change is also the roles and the access level. And pretty much that really is all there is to creating and managing user accounts. Now, one thing to note about user accounts though, is that since Voice Console 5.3, there is a feature that will automatically disable user accounts that have not been used in a specified amount of time. By default, this is set to 30 days. Any accounts that have been disabled can be re-enabled by any user with administrative rights to do so, whose account is not disabled. If you should ever run into a situation where all of your access accounts for Voice Console have been disabled, please just reach out to Mountain Leverage Support and we can help you fix that. Users are created in VoiceLink the same way that you create them in Voice Console. From the Administration tab, select Users, select Create New User. You can select a user in order to be able to view, edit, or delete the user. Next, let's take a look at how to create and manage your operators. This is done from the Voice Console tab. When you click on the Voice Console tab, you should automatically be dropped right into your operator management screen. You can see that in the default site, we've only got one operator right now. And creating a new operator is just a matter of clicking on Create New Operator under Operator Actions. This window opens up, which is fairly self-explanatory. You have an operator name, their ID. The ID usually should match what you have in your WMS. Your spoken name, this is what the operator is going to hear whenever they load their operator onto the device either when they're scrolling through the menu or when the device says to them, current operator is. An operator number, this is optional. An associated task package, again, optional. And any notes that you want to place. One thing I'd like to point out here that is very useful, not just for this create operator page, but for any page you're on in Voice Console, are these two links over in the upper right corner. You have help for this page and application help. 
If you click on help for this page, it's going to take you to the Honeywell site that has exactly what you're looking for with operators. It will step you through everything that you need to do to create one. It will show you what the values are for each one of the fields. And basically just covers everything that you would ever want to know about how to set up that operator. So let's go ahead and create an operator. For this spoken name, you want to put it in a phonetic way because the device in this case is going to say test two, three. If you leave the space out, the device will say test 23. I'm going to choose not to have an operator number or an associated task package. And I'm going to create that new operator. As you can see, I've got the operator here with the operator ID. And because this operator has never logged in, this operator is not going to show any devices or any task packages. For those customers that are also using VoiceLink, it's important to remember that you really only need to create your operators in Voice Console. The first time that an operator logs into a task to pick, their user will be automatically created in your VoiceLink instance. It's important to remember that whenever an operator first logs on to the task, they are going to be asked for their password. And whatever they speak that first time, is going to be set as their password in VoiceLink. You can then go into VoiceLink and change the password under the operator management in VoiceLink. To change your operator password in VoiceLink, you want to log into VoiceLink with an account that has administrative access or a role that allows you to change your operators. Go to your VoiceLink tab, then in your left menu, you want to come to the Go To drop-down menu, expand this, and select Operators. This will take you to your list of all operators at the site. You can either scroll this list and select the one that you're interested in, or you can bypass this step altogether and simply search for your operator by their operator ID. Once you find the operator you want, click directly on that operator to view them. You'll see here what their password is currently set to. And to change that, you simply edit this operator and change their operator password.